Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Take On Tottenham. My name is Ben and this is my Take On Tottenham. And full-time result, Leeds 3, Tottenham 1. And I'm really sorry, I'm going to get into a bit of a rant at this point in this video. But I am beyond fed up with this football club. It is a joke, the state of it is, the, the state that it is in. And I can't wait to kind of just rip into it. So let's just crack on. Um, so, same lineup. From last week, Mason stuck with the winning formula, um, granted against a relegated team. Um, same lineup. Um, I'm a bit still confused why Endon Ballet's not in. Maybe it is a case that he's just not training that hard, but um, I felt like this in particular was a game that Endon Ballet would have, we really needed him in in hindsight. Um, I, I also thought it was a game that had he been fit, I would have started Ben Davies um, because. Not only have we seen more um, more frailties from Sergio Regulon, but I, I felt it was a, a game where our wing backs were completely dominated and exposed. Um, and yeah, it, it was kind of uh, like I said, take nothing away from Leeds, by the way. Better team by a mile, um, and and fair play to them for you know playing the way they have, putting it all out there, and you know generally been quite entertaining to watch this season um, not today obviously but um, really for the first poor 10 minutes to be honest I feel like the Bale, Kane, Dali, Sonny uh, combo just didn't have anything going in the first 10 minutes it was so quiet so um, a lot of focus on our defence a lot of pressure um, and then we conceded the first goal from again this is a comedy of errors Ball got whipped in. Um, Regulon not really being aware of anything. Somehow nearly scored an own goal. Um, and then a wonderful save by Hugo Lloris, by the way. It was absolutely brilliant save, like point blank save. Um, came straight back to Leeds play. I can't remember who it was, but he just smashed it in the back of the net. And it was just poor from Regulon again. Um so that was a good start. Luckily, we had a bit of a reaction. Um, we had a Sonny score the goal, but Delhi Delhi did a brilliant little assist for it. Um, held the ball up, held it up, really timed it to perfection. Fed Sonny through, and he just whacked in the back of the net. So that was a good reaction. We had a little patch where that combination of that front four of uh, Sonny on the left, Kane in the middle on the you know striker, Bale on the right, c cutting in on his left, and then Delhi in the number ten. Um, looking really good, linking up passes. Um, look, really looking quite positive. But it was such a brief period, and we just couldn't keep it up for the rest of the game. Um, Lloris made several important saves again. Um, we Harry Kane had a goal ruled out for offside. It it was it was harsh. It was it was really harsh. I felt, and it's not just a biasing thing because it gone against my team. If that had gone for for Leeds and that had been disallowed, I still would have said it was a harsh because I think these fine margins are kind of what I don't know. It, it, it's a different one. It, it's what I don't enjoy about quote unquote modern day football. I think things like that I just feel are very, very, very harsh, and I'm kind of wor wondering how they how they can actually see how fine a margin that is from the screen that we see because I couldn't see anything. Um, but it is one of those that seems to just be regular now. Um, the way I, I sort of thought best would describe it is Harry Kane. The bit of Harry Kane that was offside was um, maybe his shoelace that like got undone and maybe like the little end bit of the shoelace was maybe in an offside position. I don't know, but it is so fine. I'm literally looking at it on the TV now and it is like almost like a hair, hair's length, hair's light, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I thought that was quite harsh, but it is what it is. So, um, it, and again, just to clarify, that doesn't make or break the game. Like I, I don't look at that and go, oh well, we were, we were wrongly, you know, if we'd scored that, we would have gone on to win the game. No, no, no. It's about reaction, and the team should have seen that and gone, right, okay, it sucks, but we'll push on, we'll go again, you know, we'll get in that position again, and and hopefully next time we won't need, need VAR. Unfortunately, the team didn't do that. They they just carried on a bit all nonchalant and like they didn't give a crap about anything, and then 
and then just didn't really react to it and that's not the not what we want to see as fans um then Leeds scored um oh sorry just before that the the assist from Delhi for that goal that went offside it, again it was a really good good bit of work from Delhi it had a good first half sort of ebbed in the second half but it was a positive performance um and then yeah like I said Leeds got their goal in um just before before the end of the first half, again another problem that we've had quite regular this this um, this season um, in terms of concentration, I guess. Um, Dia, Regulon, Aurier, all all to blame for it. Um, Dia's distribution headed it out to nobody. Um, Regulon half asleep, didn't know he had a Leeds player around him. I think he got fed out on the wide to um, Alioski. Um, and then Aurier, marking wise, went to mark a player that Bale was supposed to mark. So then it let Alioski just have a nice open run to put in across perfectly for Bamford. And then Bamford just ran straight across the front of Dyer, who had no idea where he was or who, who was there. And Leeds just scored. And it was a really good move from Leeds. But again, I look at it from Spurs' perspective of something that was completely, completely avoidable. And it's just defensive frailties exposed again. The story of the season. Um, and like I said, I keep saying it again. And I'm really sorry because I know he came out and said he feels a bit like a lot of people have made more out of the defensive mistakes for Dyer. He feels like he's made one or two where reality he hasn't he's made a lot more than that but again I feel like I'm not seeing anything to warrant you being a centre-back and I don't know why it still is happening um second half we came out um not really much improvement it was it was a lot different the first half was very open um second half was a bit more cagey uh Lloris making great saves again um, just like I said, there was just no intensity, no willingness, no no one, you know, grabbing the game by the scruff of the neck and and, and trying to change it. There was just they're just not really that bothered. Leeds got their their third late on players switching off, thinking you know it went off. They thought it was offside, so they're just sort of going like this. Oh, it's offside. We're going to stop football one oh one. You learn it in Sunday league. Play to the whistle. It's not hard. Just play to the whistle. Play to the whistle. If it carries on, just, you know, you're in the position to stop the goal from happening. And then at least maybe we can push on and maybe try and get a point. I know that's very far, far, um, far stretch of the imagination as, as trying to get an equaliser. But um, you sort of just look at it and go, like, just keep playing. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop because... If it is offside and then they still score, but you at least you went back and tried to stop it, at least then it can get ruled out if it was offside. But just play to the whistle. It's just basic defending and it's the things we struggle with the most. Um, and then Lamella. Lamella came on and did, I think we were in the 85th minute, the 86th minute, and he did... Uh, Apologies about the sound behind it. Uh, I don't live on um, like Silverstone or Don Donington or anything. I, I do just live in a normal house. Um, so, um, yeah, back to Lamella. Um, yeah, we uh, we we got to see another Rabona from Lamella, but unfortunately, it was not like the one he did at Arsenal. This one went out for a, a throw in. Um, so we're trailing in the 85th minute, three one, and Lamella thinks it's a fantastic time to do a Rabona. Because why why wouldn't you do that when why why wouldn't you do something like that when the when the fans are really pissed off that they're losing anyway why wouldn't you do a Rabona and especially why wouldn't you do it and then absolutely cock it up and put it out for a throw in who knows um, not done himself any favours that um, so I thought players who had a good game Larice there we go um, joking a little bit uh, not really joking too much uh, Lloris man of the match by a country mile you know he kept the scoreline down to 3-1 basically um, seemed like the only one who actually gave a crap today um, Delhi had a really good first half I felt a really really positive performance but second half completely ebbed away um, apart from that Kane really apart from his offside goal had quite a quiet game but was involved but just was 
not able to get anything going. Um, Sonny, yeah, he got the goal, but again, it was another game where he was kind of struggling a bit. Um, in terms of bad, <sighs> Dyer, Regulon, uh, Aurier, even Lucas and Lamella came on and didn't really contribute much. And on Ballet, I felt, and this falls more on Mason, came on too late to do anything about it. I think he came on with 10 minutes, 12 minutes to go. It's not enough time to change the game. The game's gone by then. Um, Endon Bele should have come on second half, uh, like start of the second half. Um, La Celso had such a poor game as well today, so that's why Endon Bele should have come on. I was actually ready to um, turn the match off if, Soso if Musa Soko had been brought on. I was, at, I don't, I'm a fan who watches literally from start to finish. Most games, even if we're losing 4 0, I'll still watch to the 90th minute. And, you know, that's just my level of commitment. But it, I, I generally said to myself, when, if I see Musa Soko come on when we're trying to chase the game, I'm going to just turn this off because I will have just given up hope at that point. Um, so that's kind of it, really, for, for the game um, review. But I, I just sort of I look at it and I think, right, the top four thread, very thin. It was really thin. And Leicester losing. Oh, th this is my main issue. I don't know what these players need now to be motivated because they didn't look motivated. Um, they didn't look like they had anything to play for. They talk about it in their interviews, but they didn't look like, like they, they had anything to play for. And I'm looking at it going, you saw Leicester lose on Friday and you're the next game after that. That should have been the motivation. That should have been you going, right, they've dropped points. We're going to be playing them on the last game of the season as well. They've just dropped three points. They've got a really ton, tough uh, run of fixtures as well. We've just got to keep winning matches. Four games to go. Win the matches. I know it's. I know that's very easy to sort of say, but it's like the performance there that I saw, it wasn't a team that could have come off and gone, well, we gave it our all, but Leeds were the better team. We gave it our all. They didn't give it their all. They didn't. I've just watched it and they didn't. And I'm like, where's the motivation? What What is driving these players? I, surely, they were, surely in that change room, they would have thought, with the run of fixtures that are coming up for us and for not just Leicester, but for the teams around us, if they just keep, if they just got a winning run four games that's all it is four games they could have put themselves in contention they could have put themselves as part of the conversation and like i said their hopes were very very thin but they could have and now it, it, it's pretty much impossible but barring a miracle it's impossible it i, I just can't see i couldn't see it happening anyway but they had the slim slim slice of hope for it to to maybe happen but it's definitely gone now. I can't see it happening. I think we're two points above Liverpool, who have two games in hand. And it and it and once again, story of the season: Spurs given a gift before kick off, and just not not taking advantage of it. And it, and it's happened so many times this season. Um, and the problems fall again. That the blame falls throughout the club. It falls on the players. It falls on the manager, regardless of who the manager is. Like I said, bringing Endon Mele in like really late in the game, it's not it's not good enough from Mason on that part. Like it's too late to affect the game. Um, I personally feel like Delhi, uh, not Delhi, sorry, a Dyer centre back. It's not a good it's not a good decision to be making. Um, you know, the wing back set up today didn't work. The wing backs were completely exposed. That this all. Falls on Mason. Uh, individual player performances. Players getting too comfortable at this football club. They need to. We need. We need to have a clear out in the summer. Uh, players like Sissoko. Players like Dyer. Uh, players like Lamella. You know, even Lucas. Maybe these players just maybe should move on. Um, we're just sort of seeing it a bit too often each season. These guys just looking a bit too comfortable. You know. Position's not really a threat of anything, and and it's just so poor. It's so so poor, and it just needs a bit of a refresh. I just think, and and even I said that 
it goes up to the top levels of the football club as well. You know, Joe, uh, Joe Lewis, Daniel, uh, Daniel Levy, Enoch as a whole need to leave over the Super League thing. Of course they do. The, you know, you know my opinion on this. But take the Super League thing out. Their reign has shown one trophy in over a decade. One trophy for a club that aims so high and claims to be so high. What have they got to show for it? And then that falls on the likes of Daniel Levy. Like, why didn't you buy a player for 18 months under Mauricio Pochettino? You know, why didn't that, ha that happen? And we know how he is as a businessman. And yeah, he's done some really good deals in the past. But ultimately, you are judged upon success. And what success have they brought to the football club? You know, it's great to have this shiny new world-class stadium. And yeah, it is one of the best stadiums in the world. It is. It's, you know, it's wonderful. I, I can't wait for my tour there in in, um, in a couple of months. But it's just, it it is something that I sort of look at them and go, if, if they had a performance review, you'd be out on your ear. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, if, if, this, were, if this was an employee review in terms of, what they bring to a job, like the, if they're being based upon success and they kind of are in this industry, this industry is literally just, it's a results based industry. The managers always get the cut. What is, when are these guys at the top going to be held to accountability for this? Um, I don't know. It's, it, I find it so frustrating at times to think about it. And I, I saw him at the game today and I'm, I'm looking at it going, when are you going to take note? When are you going to take note of all this? And like I said earlier, when are you going to take accountability for it? When are you actually going to come out and apologise to the fans for the state of, that the club is in right now? Because there's no good managers, not no good managers, but the two targets that we wanted, they're not on the table anymore. So now what? Who are we going to go for? Do you know what I mean? It, it it just screams as a club that doesn't have a plan. They they don't have a clue, and 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 it's frustrating year after year supporting this football club and seeing absolutely nothing back from it, and 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 it's just frustrating. And they don't even come out and apologise for it. They don't even come out at the end of the season and go, "We're really sorry about how this season panned out. We're sorry about the Super League." We're sorry about this. We're sorry about that. They'll just come out and, and spout a load of crap that they expect us to just eat up. And do you know what? Even though um, fans are going back, I think it was for the Villa game, the last home game of the season, and I also believe that there's a protest. Uh, you know, what are you trying to sell to the fans? Of course, I, I understand, like, we've had such a tough time with this pandemic and... God, we can't all wait to just go back to normal where we can go and watch a football match and it's not, you know, convoluted with things like, have you had your vaccine? Have you been this? Have you this? Have you can I take your temperature? All this and that. And God, you know, I can't wait for the time that we are back to normal. But I, I've got to say, like, with it, watching that today and watching how we have been, who would want to go and watch that? You know, even when we get the option to go, why would why do you want to go and watch this team? Like, I find it hard watching it on, you know, watching it every week on the TV and sort of thing. Like, how do you know what I mean? Like, how how are they? How do they expect the fans every single year to keep spirits up when every single year we're we're fed crap? from the people at top about, oh, we're doing this, we're doing this, oh, look at this player that we brought in. But like I said, they've just, we've not seen anything from it. And like I said, in video, my last video, whatever, you know, players come and go, managers come and go. The one constant in this whole thing has been Daniel Levy and Joe Lewis. Weird, that, isn't it? I don't know. So I'm sorry about my rant. I'm sorry that I seem to be ending these videos on a downer all the time at the minute, but I just get fed up with constantly just being, you know, constantly just seeing this level of performance. And and I think it'll be a very interesting summer. I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Um, next game is Wolves next Sunday, I believe. 
Um, and then it's Villa, and then it's Leicester. The Villa match has been moved to midweek to accommodate a fan return. 10,000 fans going back, apparently. That's really good news. Um, but, like I said, it's... <laughs> They keep playing like they are at the minute. There's going to be 10,000 fans going on. They're booing. So that'll be very interesting. So we will see what happens then. Um, there is a protest, I believe, going on uh, before the Villa game. Um, uh, hopefully it'll be a bigger protest than the one uh, that was... Was it for the Southampton game? I can't remember, but it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I, I hope the protest goes well. I hope everyone stay safe obviously with the pandemic stuff going on but I, I you know I hope everyone makes sure their voices are heard we need to be heard as fans you know this is an important time in football in the last couple of weeks this last month uh, we need to be we as fans need to be heard we need to be counted um, and we need to do you know what we need to be respected um, as well and hopefully the guys up top will see what happens in the protest and hopefully they uh they'll uh, they'll take note of how frustrated we all are at this so i will see you guys in the next uh, in the next video um like i said it'll be next sunday unless anything dramatic happens in the week um and yeah i'll see you guys in that one and as always for some reason i don't know why come on you spurs